uh, so we can, so we can share with other people who who didn't manage to come uh, today. So I'm going to start with a reminder of the call for good practices. So I've seen that some of you haven't read yet the terms of reference, but it's really easy to read them. So I'm going just now for the time being, I'm just going to give you a reminder what, what is uh, this call about without going too much into details. All right. So let's move on. So what we are looking for with this call. So we are looking for a successful urban uh, good practice that has already been implemented at local level. So it is impactful. Uh, so it means that it exists already and has brought already positive results at local level. It has also to be participatory, um, and uh, that means that it's, it has to bring together uh, stakeholders, not only from the state administration, but also from other sectors, private sector, civil society. And this, has to, uh, this participatory approach has to exist either in the design or in the implementation uh, process of this good practice. We are also looking at good practice that's integrated. So that means that it, at the same time, even though there is a thematic entry of this uh, practice, at the same time, this practice tackles also other policy dimensions, like the social dimensions, uh, the environmental dimension, and the economic dimension, at least. And this uh, good practice has to be relevant uh, and transferable to other European cities. These are the criteria, these are what we consider makes a good uh, practice and especially a NERBAC good practice, because these are the, the, the principles that NERBAC, the European Territorial Cooperation Program, represents and wants to put forward at the European level. So who is eligible for this call? Mainly it's about city administrations. In uh, When we say city administrations, we can also, um, we also mean some levels underneath, which could be districts in some uh, countries uh, and cities that they exist also districts. So districts and borders are also eligible. Metropolitan authorities and organized agglomerations and also local agencies that are defined as public or semi-public organizations set up by cities. So this, in a nutshell, these are the eligible, uh, um, uh, the eligible partners. There's no limitation in terms of size, uh, and, uh, and these institutions, these uh, organiz eligible organizations have to come from the 27 EU member states, partner states, also uh, countries benefiting from the instrument from pre-accession uh, to the European Union, and Ukraine and Moldova. So I'm going to move on very quickly. Uh, so in a nutshell, that is the call. That's what we're looking for. The application form is very easy to fill in. And whether if you have any questions about the call and especially in terms of submission, now is the time to ask them. So you have the chat. Um, and perhaps we have some questions already, Clementine. Yes, we have some questions already, but more about the, the eligibility of the of the, the, the let's say organization with uh, right. applying as a, as a good practice with the good practice and so for instance we have a question from Bologna in Italy uh, asking can a local public health agency uh, apply for the call right a local uh, public health agency I mean this uh, perhaps this kind of uh, more specific uh, questions it's better that you send us an email to good practices at urbac.eu because we need to understand whether these uh, public authorities are municipal authorities. This is a, the key aspect because if there are local agencies, municipal agencies, then yes, they are eligible. But if you have a doubt about their status, then you should uh, send us a message and then we will verify the status and the eligibility of this organization with the member state um, of the Urbac Monitoring Committee that represents uh, the, 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 the specific country. So, for example, uh, we will have to see with the Italian uh, member state of the Urbac Monitoring Committee whether this uh, organization is eligible to this call. Um, and then there is a similar question, which is, I think, um, 
from uh, municipality, uh, municipality uh, uh, I mean, from Wrocław in Poland, mm -hmm. and they are asking that they, they want to put forward a good practice that is run by an NGO, and they are asking in which extent should the city be involved in. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and this is again is a bit of particular. We have uh, these kind of questions, but I mean, the uh, the city administration has to bear the good practice actually, even though a good practice is usually uh, perhaps uh, not always, but it can be uh, implemented with the help of other organizations, private organizations, or even municipal organizations. Um, but it is a bit, uh, we have to check. We, you should send us a message to, uh, to see about, to explain uh, about, uh, to explain this uh, practice. Uh, but it shouldn't be like that the city administration applies on behalf of an NGO. Uh, it should be something that comes with initiative from the city, a, a good practice that's in initiative from the city and is implemented that in collaboration with uh, other uh, bodies. But send us an email so we can see uh, in the details uh, what are uh, the specificities of this uh, partnership. And uh, we have another question from someone from Moldova asking when will Moldova be able to participate in the call? Right. Moldova is already in this call for a good practice. Moldova is already eligible. Huh? So the cities from Ukraine and Moldova are eligible. So you can already apply. You have 10 days to do it. So don't waste your time. Uh, and then you will be, uh, there will be then other calls for networks and the transfer networks that we will touch upon uh, in a while, where uh, this kind of uh, uh, who is eligible will also be specified every time in the terms of reference of each uh, specific uh, call for networks. But now, since we're talking about this call for good practices, Moldova is, uh, is eligible indeed. And um, are the cost of the best, best practice no, no, uh, yeah, no, sorry, uh, this, there was an, another question before. So there is a practice at national level, I'm not sure which, com which, which country it is, but there is a practice at national level which is as well implemented in, within a municipality in a different and impactful way. Can it be considered for this call? I would say yes. I would say yes. I don't too. Say any yeah, absolutely. With that. Yeah, absolutely. If it's implemented by the city, that's absolutely uh, eligible. Yes. And then we have, are the cost of the best practice important? Meaning, should it be a rather cost-effective project or can it be high level as well? No, no, it's uh, it's uh, it's completely, this has no weight. This has no weight in the criteria, whether it's costly or not costly at all, this has no weight. So feel free to propose any kind of practice, whether this is uh, pricey or not. And, uh, and I mean, Angela from uh, Italy was the one questioning about the, the national practice being implemented at a local level. And I think that's it uh, for now. Yes. We have someone saying hello from Serbia. So hello, hello, uh, hello to Serbia. <laughs> and uh, just, uh, yeah, maybe to go back to Moldova, Moldova can participate in this call, even if the financing agreement has not yet been signed. This has no financial implication. Mm -hmm. This call has no financial implication whatsoever. So we're not giving you whether, even if your uh, good practice is awarded as a good practice, we don't have any uh, financial um, uh, counterpart. We don't have financial implications. So you are completely eligible. So no worries about this uh, more contractual stuff. This will be necessary though, for when it comes to uh, the call for networks, because there is a budget that is provided to all the partners. But this is for uh, another stage. And All right. Yeah, we are good for now. Good for now. All right. So what I propose now is that we move on to uh, the timeline of the call. So let's say that you have submitted uh, your application by the deadline, 30 June. I, I, I remind you. So this is the timeline. So what happens? Uh, after 30 of June. After 30 of June, we're going to have the assessment of all the good practices that we will have received. So we will do this during summer and uh, we foresee to have the selection, the, the, the selection of the urban good practices in October, by end of October. And then from October until April, we are going to have a series of communication and visibility actions for the awarded good practices. 
And one of the main milestones of this visibility and communication actions will be the Urbex City Festival that will take place in Wrocław in Poland from 8 to 10 of April 2025. And this actually will be the, the, the main moment where we will officially present and publicly present at the EU level the call for airbag transfer networks, which will run from April to June 2025. And then hopefully September, October, uh, there will be the start of airbag transfer networks. And this, we will touch upon them uh, in a while. A few more uh, minutes before we come to this uh, main point. All right, so I want, before we go to the transfer networks, I want to say a bit, uh, remind you, those of you who have participated in the previous uh, info session, we focus mainly on the visibility opportunities, but I'd like a bit to give you a reminder what happens um, after October 2024, as soon as we know the uh, good practices, we're going to have uh, quite a lot of things happening at EU level through urban channels and events, uh, the commissions, uh, DG, regional and urban policy, channels and events, and also European Urban Initiative channels and events. We are all, all going to join our forces to put forward um, at the EU level the selected uh, urban good practices. And of course, as I told you, I want to really again to focus on the Urban City Festival uh, that will take place in Wrocław in April 2025. All the selected good practice cities will have to be there. This is a festival for the selected good practice cities. It will be, uh, it will, you will be the main protagonist of this, uh, of this festival. And the objective is that, first of all, we would like to congratulate you for uh, being selected. So we will have an award ceremony in the evening of 8 April. And here I have put a, a picture with uh, the mayor, Kyriakos Karaklas, who is here with us today, uh, who received uh, the certificate of the Urban Good Practices back in 2017 in the Tallinn uh, Festival. And uh, after that, for two days, from 9 to 10 of April 2025, you will be in the spotlight by presenting your good practice to other 500 city representatives who will have come to the festival just to hear from you and discover the latest urban uh, developments. So you will also have us also good practice city. You will have also the opportunity to increase your knowledge on urban topics because you will also be able to discover all the other good practices uh, across Europe. Uh, you will also be able to discover the call for urban transfer networks. So the terms of reference uh, of that call in particular. So it will be mainly Clementine with your team doing this job, um, presenting you in a very um, thorough way the call. And also, it will be a very good network opportunity, this festival, to get to know other European peers and uh, find the match to propose and form an urban transfer network. So that's uh, that's from my part. Yes. Yes. And maybe I was just, before we go to the transfer network part, there are still two questions about ah, the right. places. So I say maybe okay. it's good to tackle them. Um, we have first a question from Clementine, very nice first name, by the way. Um, and she's asking if our good practice is still implemented, but we already have good results from it. Is it visible? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's still an ongoing project, but you already have good results. It's absolutely eligible, yes. And then we have from Joanne um, a question, the person who authorized the submission of the practice, could it be the director of the department? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, it's not the same as the uh, for call uh, for networks. Here, it's really like a la more light uh, process. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. All right. Fine. The, then the floor is yours, Clementine. Yeah. Yeah. Let's focus on the transfer networks. So we switch. Yes. Apparent. Okay. So good morning, everyone. Nice to see you all of you online. So what I'm uh, about to to tell you is. To, to explain to you is what transfer networks are about. Um, but before I, uh, so transfer network is basically the step that comes after the good practice uh, call. I know you've been very interested in the good practice call. Now it's as well um, just to open the door of uh, towards what happens 
when you are selected uh, as a group artist and what could be possible uh, within a transfer network. Just a bit of a disclaimer before I start. Um, what I'm going to, to explain to you is based on what happened under Urbac 3, so the last few years, but um, it's not completely defined yet because there could still be some uh, fine tuning, some changes, and this is going to be approved by the, uh, the monitoring committee. So the big lines, the main feature should be there, but I just want to, to share a bit of a note of caution to not take exactly every uh, information as a uh, perfectly, uh, let's say, de definite, because some things may still uh, change. So, just to give you a little bit of history, of context. So, the, this uh, transfer network were, were first piloted under Urbac 2, so uh, in 2000, uh, under the, the period, the programming period that go, went from 2007 and 2013. This was a very good um, uh, type of, uh, of, um, of networks and it was really appreciated. So we decided under Airbag 3, so from 2014 to 2022, to continue this, uh, this experience. And therefore, we um, financed 23 transfer network plus a second, seven uh, transfer network second wave, what we call the second wave of transfer network um, under the back three. Um, and basically what happened with this seven uh, transfer network second wave, it's just that seven of these uh, practice that were already transferred uh, within transfer network, they were transferred to other a second time to other types of, uh, of, of city. And I think uh, at Yenu in, in Cyprus, um, uh, from uh, which we, we have the mayor here, uh, was in this case. They were first transferred, their practice was first transferred within the volunteering city network and then a second time within a transfer network, second wave. Uh, so all in all, we had 23 good practices transferred to 163 cities and 188 cities involved uh, in total. So what is exactly a transfer network? So a transfer network is like the, uh, a group of cities composed of one good practice city. So let's say you are approved as a, as a good practice uh, city uh, under this call. You will have the possibility to become a good practice city, transferring the practice to transfer cities. So, what happened for the good practicity? The good practicity takes the role of mentor and share the knowledge to the other city, the transfer cities. Uh, these transfer cities, they will understand what we, we have, like uh, this, this, this scheme that we call understand, adapt, reuse. Really, the point is to really get a deep understanding of the, of the practice. Obviously, it's not supposed to be uh, transposed from A to Z directly in another part of Europe, you need to adapt it to your local context. So there is this adaptation phase and then reuse, how to put really this practice into action at local level. And we have many uh, examples and maybe uh, uh, Kyriakos can share uh, exactly what happened uh, within the transfer cities, but a very uh, practical transfer of, of practice. And obviously, um, doing that, you will have the possibility to solve some of the challenges you have at local level with an already existing practice solution. And on the other side, the good practice will have the possibility to refine and improve its, its own practice and to get, as uh, Jenny already said, wider recognition and visibility uh, throughout Europe. And all in all, because this is one of the, 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 the main objectives of your pact, the, the point is really to, to improve you know, sustainable urban practices, that uh, city staff get uh, uh, improved skills dealing with urban issues, uh, that you learn from other cities in Europe, all in all, and that you access uh, financial resources for exchange and learning. So this, this is really what Transfer Network is about. How does it work? Um, so, like I already said, you will have the lead partner. And in this context, the lead partner, which is the good practice city, uh, has a very important role because the, the lead partner city, the good practice city, has the knowledge of the, of the good practice. So they are really, the team within the lead partner city is really a key element of, 
of this, uh, this network. Obviously, they will, as in any other urban network, they will be supported by your lead experts. So throughout the, let's say, transfer network journey, you have support of experts, but one in particular, the lead expert is really uh, um, uh, important and supporting the lead partner into faci in facilitating uh, the exchange between the, the, the lead partner city and the transfer city. And at each, um, in each partner level, at, for each transfer city, there will be uh, people from the city involved, as well as what we call urban local group. So what is a urban local group? It's any uh, city that gets involved in an urban network needs to set up uh, what we call the urban local group, so a local group of stakeholders that will be involved in the transfer of the good, uh, good practice. So, and um, what will happen during this, uh, this transfer network is really an exchange of knowledge, like it says on, the, on this uh, drawing here, between the lead partner and the city. But obviously, when there will be um, when uh, there will be trans what we call transnational meetings, so meeting where all the partners meet, the exchange happens as well between every partner uh, city. So this is really a moment of big exchange. As well, um, uh, how a transfer network works, it doesn't work completely on its own. Obviously, you have the support of the urban secretariat. So we, uh, uh, in Paris, we are there to support you and to, to, to get you through this process. You also have uh, the support of national urban points, and as well, ad hoc experts. So in addition to the lead expert, you have the possibility to, um, to, to, to hire other uh, experts that, that can help you on specific topics uh, or for some specific uh, facilitation point. So who is a network transfer? Who is a transfer network for? So I'm a bit repeating myself here, but just to summarize, the transfer network is for cities that are interested in transferring a good practice. So we are, I think we are all excited to know uh, how many good practices will we, we will receive, how many of them will be uh, uh, approved and are selected, and to see this new uh, batch of uh, good practice. And maybe so when the the, the goal the call will be um, finished, you will get through this let's say catalog. And you will see that some of these uh, good practices are really interested for you. So if you are in this case, you should be involved as a transfer city because you are really interested in uh, transferring one of the practices that will be selected. You can as well be involved as a good practice city. So as a lead partner leading the network. But in this case, obviously, you, defini you definitely need to uh, uh, ap uh, apply for the good practice call and to get approved. And in this case, you will really need the network and share your knowledge uh, with, the, with the transfer partners. But obviously, I mean, you may see, you, it's important to see that it's not only a one-way bridge, but it's, there is really an exchange. And maybe Kayakos can tell a bit more about that, but there is really a, a broader exchange that only the lead partner giving uh, one's knowledge to the transfer cities. So eligible beneficiaries. So here, um, cities, and I'm coming back to what cities mean, means uh, in, for urban, but will be eligible any city from uh, European member states, as well Norway, Switzerland, which are uh, the program's partner states, IPA countries, Albania, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Montenegro, North Macedonia, and Serbia, and cities from Ukraine and Moldova. Here, once again, a bit of word of caution. This city will be eligible. It's not completely sure yet for which, yet for which role. We are going to cities from Ukraine and Moldova be able to be lead partner. This is still to be, uh, to, be, to be defined. We have not yet discussed that with the uh, monitoring committee. So just this is the kind of thing that needs to be, to be refined. But for sure, all of these cities will be, will be welcome to, to join Transfer Network. And what is it, a city under the Urban for program? So we have quite a large uh, definition of what a city can be. So a city can be a town, a municipality, but as well uh, 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 agglomerized 
uh, area, um, uh, metropolitan area, um, as well as a neighborhood can be considered as a city and local agency. So someone was asking, but for the good practice call about the public local health, health agency, we would need to see the, the status in, in particular, but for a transfer network, it may be that this partner is, uh, is eligible as a city partner. Then, in terms of resources, because this is important, uh, it's not uh, just that you are approved as a, as a network and then you, you are on your own. We provide some resources. Uh, this is, again, to be taken as indicative, but it is foreseen for now to um, uh, give any, uh, I mean, all uh, transfer network, uh, approved transfer network, a budget of 750,000 euros. And this budget is not only for the good practice city, it's to be shared among all the, all the partners. This budget will cover staff costs, and this is an important point. Um, we, this is where it may, for, for instance, for a smaller city, it may uh, make a difference. For instance, we already had some uh, testimony like that, where uh, for smaller city, it was really an occasion for, to, 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 to to get uh, to, to hire new people, to hire one or uh, two more people. So this is uh, quite interesting. Then you have um, the office and administration costs that are covered. They are actually a percentage of the, the, the staff cost that you will claim. Uh, travel and accommodation are a big part of, the, of this budget. External expertise, because you have the possibility to hire uh, as well local expertise and equipment. Then in addition to this budget, you have what we call an expertise envelope. So there is a, an additional uh, pot of money, let's say, which will cover uh, the days for lead expert. Because I said earlier that the network will be supported by a few ad, uh, experts, be it lead experts or ad hoc experts. And this is not paid on the, bu the budget of the network. This is really paid uh, with an additional envelope that is directly uh, managed by the urban secretary. That is dedicated to the network, but managed by the secretariat, so you don't have any public procurement uh, uh, procedure to, to, to follow. And just as a point of, uh, as an indication in the past, uh, or currently in, uh, in, the, in the, the network that we have currently running, it's about 170 days of, uh, of expertise. So this is not just an indication, but to, to show you that it's quite a big number of, of days so that these experts can follow you throughout uh, the, the, the time of the transfer networks. Oops, uh, I went too fast. So this is my last slide, but just want to, to come back to the, um, let's say the timeline, because if you apply for the good, call of good practices and if you want to, to join a transfer network, you may be involved in uh, with your back until 2028 which seems like a very long time. Uh, um, but uh, so the, you may be part of the family until at least 2028. And uh, Jenny already call, uh, spoke about the call for good practices, but I just wanted to, to remind here how this will happen. So basically there are, if you want to build a transfer network, there will be a two steps. So you need first to approve as a good practices then there will be the selection and so on. There will be the urban festival like Jenny explained. And then we will open the call for transfer network. So the cities selected as good practices can then uh, apply to become a transfer network. You could be as well just interested in joining a transfer network and then you just then stay tuned, stay tuned until uh, April next year. Join us maybe in the city festival in, in Wrocław. And, uh, and apply as a partner in a, a transfer network. Then the assessment will happen over the, the summer and we expect the, the transfer network to start in October, November. Once again, this is where some fi uh, fine tuning needs still to, to happen. And what I was saying already uh, before, this, the net, this network will last 30 months and will follow a three stage process understand, adapt, reuse. This is, let's say, three big moments that will structure the life of the transfer network. And the end as well will be um, 
uh, the, with what we call the finale. But about la, um, over these 30 months, this is what's going to happen. Again, getting a big understanding of the, a deep understanding of the good practice, really uh, like visiting the city, uh, getting to exchange with local stakeholders to know how they put the practice into, into practice. Um, and to really uh, get a good understanding as well of the, the, other net, the, the other partners and to build a team, basically. Then there is this adapt phase uh, that, will be, that, will, uh, that will happen where you take this good practice and you try to adapt it to your local context. What we observe in the past is that, um, for instance, you, like, like one good practice had several components. And some partners were saying, okay, this component doesn't fit really uh, in my city because of some laws, whatever. Um, and then they were just focusing on one or two of these components. So this is how you will adapt the, the practice. And then reuse, it's really about doing it, implementing the practice at local level, seeing who will be involved in this, uh, in this practice and putting things into, into practice. And the finale will be a few months that will be dedicated to sharing, you know, uh, with a wider audience what happened uh, within the network to show the, the concrete results of this uh, transfer happening uh, within the transfer network. And throughout this process, very quickly, um, you again, you won't be uh, left alone. You will have a lot of support from the Urbac Secretariat. We will have what we call capacity building. So we'll help you with the methodology because transfer doesn't happen magically. You need to work on it and, and you need to work with your stakeholders. So we will be there to really, we have, I'm not going into detail, but we have universities or campus, what we call universities or campus, that are really trainings for city practitioners that will uh, help you with the, with the urban method. We have tools in the toolbox. We have the national back point. And as well, a final word for me, what is important as well at the moment, since urban four, we are as well paying more attention to three prospecting priority, gender uh, equality, green and digital transition, and overall, this is as well something that we will support uh, cities involved in, uh, in transfer network with. And that's it for me. Many thanks, Clementine. Thank you very much. Uh, it's the transfer networks in a nutshell. Um, so I just have to warn you that I think we are going to uh, pass our time. So we will need, a, I think, a bit, let's say, uh, Sorry, 10, no, no, that's fine, 10 or 15 minutes after 10, uh, just to go through the whole... Uh, uh, the whole experience about the transfer network. And there are some questions. Before I give the floor to Kiriakos, there are three questions, Clementine. Okay. First of all, it's about the selection of experts. How uh, an expert is selected for an airbag network? Is it the secretariat or is it uh, the network itself? Okay, so the, the process is not, once again, is not defined here in this specific case for, for transfer network, how it will happen. Usually we ask uh, the networks to nominate a few experts and then we, we have, um, we can organize interviews and so on. And this is a shared decision uh, between the lead partner and, uh, and, uh, and the secretariat. Usually, if, but usually if you think, I mean, the, what is important to say is that the expert needs to be approved in the urban call uh, in the urban pool of experts. So if you go online, you have the pool with urban validated experts. So if you have a lead expert, they should be uh, uh, approved in this pool. And um, But then if you think yourself that you have a very good expert that you would like to work with, this person needs to be approved in the pool. And then we can discuss on how to hire this, uh, this person. All right. And more details in any case about this, the selection of experts will be in the terms yes, of reference. Exactly. Of so I know that um, maybe you are very eager to get a more, uh, as well, more detail about the call. This will come, uh, you know, toward the end of the year, early next year for the city festival. Every, everything will be in place and uh, you will uh, have all the information. Here is just a teaser, let's say. All right, so I have another question uh, from uh, Joanne uh, Kaba. Uh, so she's asking, so they are a metropolitan authority and they are potentially interested to transfer one good practice from one part of the metropolis, I guess, to another uh, part of the metropolis. So the question is, can they be lead partners and partners at the same time of a, of a single network? This would be the first time, I think. <laughs> Uh, partner and then so I, I don't see how this is the, yeah. I, I would need to, to think a bit more it can be 
if it's a neighborhood, maybe we will need to to check that how this would work. Uh, but once again, you know, things are still open so it's interesting as well if you share with us you know uh, what could be interesting on, on your side so we can adapt uh, as much as possible the the call but uh, for this i would need to look into yeah. more detail uh, about that i think yes and i think joan is from uh, barcelona all right i have another question clementine or two more questions mm -hmm. are there any requirements for co-financing in the net in the transfer network Yes, uh, you may have seen, I, I, I didn't go through this uh, point, but you may have seen on the slide, um, there is, depending on the, on the country or the region that you are in, uh, in Europe, you have um, dif uh, different co-financing rate, meaning that, for instance, if you are from a more, once again, this is to be taken with a, 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 a bit of caution because this needs to be approved by the monitoring committee. But for now, what we have in place is that, for instance, cities from uh, a European or EU uh, more developed uh, cities um, have received 60% of EADF. The rest need to be uh, financed either locally or with uh, national support, for instance. Um, so this is for more developed. Then transition is 70 and less developed is 80, if I remember well. Then IPA countries are 95%. And, uh, and then Ukraine and Moldova, this is the, to be defined. And Switzerland and, um, and uh, Norway, it's 50%. So in any case, in each, in all cases, you need to bring a bit of uh, of uh, your own font. Mm -hmm. All right, and I have a final question and then we really need to move on. Um, is it a problem in gender equality if there are more women than men involved in a network? So let's say if two out of uh, two thirds um, in a network are women. I don't see the, yeah. <laughs> the problem uh, with that. No, and you know, if the, I mean, uh, this is still like that, that uh, the, the society itself is not really uh, perfectly equal. So you may have field where uh, more women are involved. You may have field where it's more uh, men involved. So, I mean, if this is a field where more women are involved, uh, this is obviously not a problem, but uh, we always encourage to, 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 to have as um, varied as possible uh, a group and stakeholders group that are as varied as possible and really to push, for instance, like let's say if the, the topic is about gender, this is important that men are as well uh, involved. So that would be uh, my mm -hmm. point. Absolutely. All right. So let's uh, let's. I propose that we move forward, and I'd like here to bring to somebody to illustrate the transfer experience, uh, and I'll bring in uh, Kiriakos. Let's uh, speak this one in exchange. So our mayor, uh, Kiriakos Karaklas, mayor of Athienu, uh, a city in Cyprus, uh, who uh, uh, has led. The, very back transfer network in the past. So welcome, Kiriako. Very nice to see you here today. Good morning, Jenny and Clementine and all the participants. It's so nice to be with you in this nice info session. And thank you for the picture you showed from Tallinn. It's great. Uh, very nice, uh, Jenny. Nice memories, uh, Kiriakos. Uh, so Kiriako, uh, um, we are going before I give you the floor to present your good practice, we are going to launch a jingle. Okay.
So, it's welcoming a nice thank you. Very nice journey. Very beautiful, very nice. So, I can get this was a taste of your uh, of your uh, good practice, but I'll give yes. the floor first to you to present a bit your city and then the good practice. Very nice. So, uh, municipality of Athien, which is uh, one of the oldest municipalities in Cyprus since 1926, a small municipality, only seven, around 7,000 inhabitants, uh, located in the uh, inland side of Cyprus, rich cultural heritage. There is a high community engagement, and this has to do with all this social uh, thing that we have here. Uh, we have the largest territory of all municipalities of Cyprus, even though we are a small municipality, we have the largest territory, but 75% of this land is occupied since 1974 by the Turkish troops. And we are almost surrounded by Turkish army, only our South is free. But we struggle here and this help to increase this social innovation and this social cohesion. Uh, the good practice. Uh, since 1970, we have this municipal council of volunteers, the MCV, uh, which is an intergenerational governance structure of around 50 people. It's chaired by their respective mayor every time. People of all ages offer their time and service to those in need, from very young children to old people. Is, uh, it helps the welfare services of the municipality and it recognizes the social needs and contributes to the development of necessary policies to address these needs. Uh, there are four programs. We have the Home for the Aged, the Cleathius Community. It's a living organization providing care to the elderly and not only. We have the Center for Adults since 2001, the other one from 83. This uh, Center for Adults gives social policies for the entire society of the municipality. We take care, home care, and many others. A community nursing center since 1991, high quality services for children for up to three years old. And then there is this, this social welfare committee that is chaired from uh, the mayor again since 2011 with social benefits network and social care to people in need. So here we can see some uh, pictures. Uh, it's uh, taking the old people to the park uh, other people taking them to the sea, uh, some children and drawing to them and uh, helping them in their daily life. And in our uh, MCV, we use this volunteer sustainability cycle where we engage local society in, in volunteering activities that contribute in the quality of life and uh, lead to more local society engagement that increase the efficiency and sustainability of the society. This is what we do many years ago. So the people, we say that people here, uh, when from the time they are very small, they grow up and they know that they want to help the others. It's something that comes from the society from the time people are very young. So what we did, we submitted an application and we awarded ERPA Good Practice in 2017. We really submitted two applications. They were at that time submitted three applications from Cyprus and two were ours. One of uh, ours was approved, this one we'll talk about, and also one from the city of Limassol. Here are some pictures from the Tallinn uh, presentation there. I presented the good practice to people who were at the uh, Erpac uh, City Festival. The picture that uh, is our logo for this good practice. And again, the nice picture you showed earlier. Uh, 
And uh, we were the only one who submitted from Cyprus, uh, the only city that submitted uh, an application for a, an airpack transfer network. So indeed, we are very indeed, small. Kiriakos. Yes, indeed. So, so this was back in 2017, the first ever call for good practices that we launched as Airbag, and now this time is the second uh, call for good practices. But let's hear from you because you were, uh, as you said, you, uh, you there were only two cities from Cyprus at that time that submitted. So you, as a Fiano and Limassol. And then you decided, so you got awarded for your good practice. And then you decided to run for the first time a transfer network as lead partner. So a small city deciding for the first time to run a transfer network. Let's see what you did. So we were approved and we were very glad we were one of the 23 transfer networks that were approved. We started in, uh, in December 2018. It was supposed to be two years. There was a six month extension due to the COVID situation. The, the whole budget was 600,000 for the network and 200,000 were for the municipality of Athienu. We had uh, a total of eight partners uh, with us, seven more partners. We tried to, uh, to choose partners from all over Europe in order to disperse and uh, to have partners from all the areas. So we had uh, the municipality of Capizzi from Sicily, Italy, 3,150 people only. We had the municipality of Altea from Spain, more than 20,000 people, Arcos de Valdevez from Portugal, Kiltair County Council from Ireland, 200,000 of people. Altena from Germany, Ratli from Poland, Eprekrada from Croatia. And we had, as is now, the elite expert who, who was paid directly from Airpark. She was Mrs. Maria Joao Vilgueira Rao. She helped us a lot from Portugal. She supported the transfer process of the good practice to the other cities a lot. She was a, a real help to all of us. Very good. So it's really good also to see that you transferred as a small city your good practice also to bigger cities like in Kildare, like 200,000 uh, people. That's also very impressive and in terms of scale uh, that uh, transfer is possible from one small city to another. And we have seen it also in many cases in different transfer networks. Right, sure. let's move on, uh, Kiriakos, about what, what was transferred there, uh, exactly from your good practice to, uh, to the other cities. So with the help of this uh, real good uh, lead expert we had, we decided that uh, the best thing to do it, it was to find thematic modules and transfer elements in order to transfer to the other cities. So each city had to choose according to their needs what which of these uh, transfer elements should be transferred. So we had the participative governance uh, element with objectives to achieve coordination of volunteering actions and increase participative mechanisms. Then we had the M2 module to increase intergenerationality, increase the activities with young and elderly people. The M3 to mobilize young volunteers, which is something that most of the cities needed, they didn't have it, to attract young people to volunteerism and increase their community participation. Also, M4, the corporate citizenship, to increase involvement of companies in volunteering through citizenship that helps in financing and other uh, uh, matters. And also the social entrepreneurship to tackle unemployment. Each city had to choose uh, some of them. Most of them chose the M1 to M4, and some of them, the last one, the O1, this social entrepreneurship. And we worked through this all of the two and a half years that lasted, the 30 months that lasted the network. We used the transfer methodology with the Caruzem model, a meeting to each uh, partner city, so we had, uh, besides the, the 
international meetings. We had seven transnational meetings run each in each of the partner city. We had to constitute seven airpack local groups, one per partner, and also one for the lead partner, our city. The other partner cities had to produce a transfer plan in order to be able to transfer our good practice to their city. And we worked on an improvement plan in order to improve our good practice. And there was a continuous interaction and collaboration among partners. The main uh, thing that we produced, I could say it, it was this transfer guide. This transfer guide is uh, in the internet now, if somebody can find it. And uh, a city, a European city that was to re-examine their uh, uh, policy on social matters, can, can uh, follow it and can transfer our good practice to their city. It's a very good guide. Then uh, we were asked if we, we wanted to submit an application for a second transfer network and uh, taking uh, in uh, uh, since we were very succeeded in the first network, we decided to submit a second application. We had to find four partner cities. So now we had uh, again a city from uh, Portugal, Algustrel, and uh, we had Aya from Greece, a city close to Larissa, Baska Stiavnica from Slovakia, and Vilani from Latvia. Again, uh, the area was dispersed in Europe. Uh, we made, again, five transnational meetings. We, we had four airpack local groups for the four new partners, four transfer plans. Again, an improvement plan for our good practice many local actions. We had for the total a budget of 550,000 and 80, 180,000 for the municipality of Athier, a total of 380,000 in uh, almost four years for Athier, which for a small city is a great thing. Thanks for your patience, everybody. You can follow us in this uh, Facebook and Instagram and et cetera. And uh, I don't know, Jenny, if you want to ask Thank me. you. Yes, thank you very, very much, like, Yakos. It's a very good, you know, to have an overview of the whole experience. So you transfer your good practices into uh, transfer networks. So my first question before I, uh, we see whether we have other questions in the chat, my first question is, if you can tell us, so this you told us, I mean, what you did in terms of activities, uh, what was your good practice, but as a city, uh, what what kind of benefits did you have from participating in, uh, in these two networks as a lead partner city? Yes, uh, you understand, Jenny, the benefits were many. Uh, you understand what is for a small city like us to lead two European networks with uh, a total of 11 cities are partners, some about the same size or smaller and others much bigger as we said. A very high budget, 380,000 on behalf of our municipality, uh, not something usual. We did many things with this budget, covering the cost for our staff that participated in the functioning of these uh, projects. We had uh, the opportunity to hire personnel to help us. We produced videos, books, and other material related to the projects for our city and many, many others. We made many relationships that last in all participating cities. Mayors and an MP from our partner cities visited at the Athienu. They were excited. There are many people from these cities that come to our city delighted to what they hear from the partners that participated about our place, the excellent food we have. is something that uh, everybody knows, the food of Athienu. We have many visitors for that. And uh, I can tell you that the, 
there is a high level of uh, visibility at EU level about our volunteering good practice. We receive uh, many congratulations. Many people want to, many cities want to know more about it. We receive emails or chats in order to speak about it. And uh, this makes us very proud on what do we have achieved. And uh, we were also able to plan and decide improvements to our uh, good practice. And uh, right now we will promote actions to improve it. Uh, our luck has been decided to sustain even after the transfer networks as some misuggestions to the municipality or social markets in the area. I hope uh, I answered your very well, very good. I'm very happy to hear all this, uh, Kiriakos. Uh, uh, many different benefits in terms of, so, because I'm also asking, uh, and this perhaps is related to the challenges that you may have. Uh, it would be good also to hear from you whether you had any challenges uh, for when leading an, uh, an urban transfer network, because we hear quite a lot, and especially nowadays, because there are so many European initiatives uh, at the EU level. Uh, so we were wondering, uh, and people are, you know, uh, um, doing lots of things with European projects, uh, Horizon projects, uh, cities missions. There are so many now initiatives. So people don't uh, have uh, so much of uh, uh, resources, so many resources to uh, to be involved uh, in uh, different uh, networks. So what were your own challenges and perhaps what would you also advise to these uh, cities that are now uh, listening to us and they are considering uh, about uh, applying uh, with a good practice and then with the transfer network yeah jenny when we understood that there was the opportunity to lead a network we didn't hesitate at all we believe that when there is a will you can achieve your goals being positive we submitted the application the first time that uh, was very complex. Now it's much easier. We use volunteer collaborators and we succeeded two times, bringing to our city all those benefits that were mentioned uh, before. What I shall tell all the participants, don't hesitate at all. Apply, apply right away. Prepare your application. You have many chances to succeed, then benefits to your city will be great. So don't hesitate at all. That's my advice. Thank you very, very much, uh, uh, Kiriakos, uh, for all this uh, experience that you shared, but also the, the advice. Uh, I'm wondering, Clementine, whether we have any questions in the chat. No, we don't. Um, seems all is clear. All is clear. Thank you very much. That just perhaps before we we I, I know that we are a bit over eleven o'clock, but before we end this meeting, uh, I just like to a bit to recap also a few things. Um, uh, first of all, to say that uh, there, as you can see, there are two steps. There is a, a first step before joining a, a NERBAC transfer network, which is, first of all, to apply uh, to uh, this call for good practices, especially if you want to become lead partner city for a transfer network, uh, as uh, Kiriakos uh, and uh, the city of Atiano uh, have done it. So if you want to lead a NERBAC transfer network, you have first to apply to this call for good practices, that it's open until 30 June. And if this is awarded, then you have the possibility to apply uh, to the call for urban transfer networks. I also want to say that even though this was uh, this was a, um, a session that for you to understand what's a transfer network uh, um, and think about the possibility of applying and to lead an urban transfer network afterwards, you're not obliged to do that. Mm -hmm. You're not obliged uh, to uh, apply and be, uh, to be to lead a NERVAC transfer network. So you can uh, very much uh, apply to this call for good practices and have your uh, good practice awarded and benefit from visibility opportunities, and that's it. You can very very well uh, do that. Um, 
But you can see also with the experience from Kiriakos that there are many benefits if you also apply to uh, lead a NERPAC to transfer network. You can also decide that you will just apply uh, and let's say hopefully your uh, good practice is uh, awarded and then you will decide perhaps that you don't want to lead a NERPAC transfer network, but you want to be partner of a transfer network and actually receive the good practice of another good practice city. So this is also possible. And if let's say you apply with a good practice now and your good practice is not selected, not awarded, still you can still uh, give it a go and uh, try to uh, become a partner of a transfer network uh, within uh, uh, this uh, when there will be the call for transfer networks. So there are many possibilities uh, that you can uh, that you have uh, as city representative. So, but the, the first thing I really really want to encourage you to uh, participate in this call for good practices. Uh, which is uh, closing uh, on the 30th of June. I'm going to say it many times, mm -hmm. 30th of June. <laughs> so you don't you don't miss the deadline, actually. And maybe if I just, uh, I, I mean, I just want to add a point. This is a bit improvisation. Sorry, it's Jenny. I'm just uh, taking the floor. But uh, I would say as well that the good practice call, as well as well, the transfer network call is a good way for newcomer cities. I don't know if there are lots of newcomer cities among uh, people online. But uh, if you are a newcomer, you don't know your DACT, like Atenu was uh, in 2017, they were completely new to your DACT. I think these are good ways to, uh, to really enter the, this Urbac uh, community and to get to know the program because it's quite straightforward, let's say. Absolutely, absolutely. So are there any questions? Just, uh, uh, just yeah. one question. Uh, okay, so there are two questions now, All but right. one question is, uh, can you... Please provide the email address uh, if we have question about the, the call. Yes. So if I someone can show you that. right now. Okay, perfect. And someone has a, Katri has a question about the budget. Uh, the, I guess the budget about the transfer network. Maybe Katri, uh, because I don't see the question um, here, but Katri, if you want to, uh, to send them an email as well, uh, we, will, uh, we will answer, answer you. Yeah, unless you want now to to to, to, sh to share your question via the chat. Yes, and I think uh, Katri, we have been already in contact by email, so you can uh, submit your uh, your uh, question also uh, to good practices at urbacto.eu. Yeah, so it just uh, she's uh, she has a question about the best best practice call budget. Ah, all right. So here for the call for good practices, I mean, all these awarded good practices, uh, as I told you before, there will be benefits in terms of visibility, and also you will have the opportunity to lead a, an urban transfer network. Um, there is no financial counterpart. So the uh, awarded good practices, uh, they, they will not receive some kind of uh, um, financial arrangement from our side. But uh, what we will have is, especially for all this visibility and communication actions, we are going to cover the expenses of the city representatives to join, for example, the Urbex City Festival or other uh, communication events where you will be invited to present your good practice. Mm. No, but now she's uh, like specifying a bit of question. Should I add whole budget we have used so far for our practice. All right. So for the application, what kind of budget they should uh, yeah. indicate in the application form? All right. So in the application form, uh, you can indicate uh, whatever th you think it's, you know, uh, it is measurable already from yours. You don't have to be completely thorough and break down the budget huh, of the practice. But just give us an idea of how much uh, this uh, practice uh, cost, uh, and so we can assess a bit, uh, how much uh, possible would be also to other European cities. But just don't don't put yourself in too much of trouble. Just give us uh, a, a number uh, that covers a bit uh, the functioning of uh, of the practice. It's as well a good uh, good information for cities in the future that will be interested in transferring your practice that may be interested if you want to transfer it uh, to to know a bit of a scale of uh, fund 
they would need in order to, 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 to transfer the practice. Yes. I think that's it. All right. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ. Κυριάκο, thank you very much. You are very uh, welcome. You are very welcome. And we hope that we will receive a new application from your side, Κυριάκο. Probably <laughs> you will come before days. the third There is another good practice that uh, we are planning to submit. Yes. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you very much, everybody, for following this uh, webinar. Uh, this was the last info session. So um, we stay in touch now uh, by email through goodpractices.urbac.eu. Uh, don't hesitate to send your questions. If you have any doubts, uh, send them over. And uh, please, please do apply with even with more than one applications. Thank you very much. And for those who staying a bit more, I can also uh, put the the whole song of uh, Europe. <laughs> it's the it's the final countdown. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.